Oh, dear, what a mess. Dust everywhere. What will Robert think of us, Charles? You know how particular he is and how he notices everything. It won't take him many minutes to see that the house is really disgustingly dirty. Oh, I should have liked him to come back and find the place pick and span. Mistake of which, instead of which you'll see it's simply crumbling with decay. Oh, nonsense, Margaret. Well, look at that hole in the landing. You might have broken your leg last night. That's dry rot. I suppose the whole house is riddled with it. When one thinks what the place was like that last summer before they went to Africa and what it is now, it'll be a shock to him, Charles. Why? Everybody knows how things have changed in the last five years. Well, I've been looking at my hands this morning. Hideous lumps. Can't get any of my rings on. Robert will just have to understand that I'm practically a scullery maid nowadays. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. Nurse. All things wise and wonderful. Nurse. The Lord God made them all. Uh, you see, I've offended her somehow, so she simply ignores me. And I have to try and run this enormous house with an idiot like that. It's really impossible. Why we keep her, and every day she seems to get deafer and more obstinate, I shout at her till I'm hoarse, and she simply ignores me and starts singing hymns. What's the matter with the fire, dear? It won't burn. Well, you must dry the wood. I told you that. I did dry it. What with collecting it and chopping it and drying it, it's a day's work to have a fire in the house. Really, when one thinks of the drudgery, simply to keep alive, we might as well be living in the Middle Ages. Oh, for heaven's sake, leave it. It's not cold. It's October. We usually start in October. October. Horrid month for month. Such a lot of squirrels, you see, her pretty little creatures. Well, at least we might have cleaned the window, though heaven knows nobody wants to see the garden now. Oh, I wish Harry wouldn't do that so close to the house. He'll shoot one of us someday. He's not fit to be trusted with a gun. It's really too dangerous at his age. He's coming up the drive. He's got a pigeon. I dare say. And who's going to pluck it? I suppose if I ask him to be a little more punctual and tidy while Robert and Elizabeth are here, he'll just tell me I'm fussy. Lady, what am I to do oh, with it? listen to her shouting like a mad thing. It's worse than having a child in the house to look after. Miss Lady! Yes, yes, nurse, I'm coming, I'm coming. Of course, she's entirely forgotten what I told her to do. I get so tired of explaining and explaining, and then having to do it myself. Miss Lady! I'm coming, I'm coming, nurse. See my pigeon, Charles? Let no one say I'm not useful about the house. Here's our dinner. Where's Margaret? She's upstairs, getting the room ready. Oh, quite brisk out. I suggest a fire. They'll feel the cold coming from Nyasaland. The damn thing won't burn. Ah, you want to dry the wood, my dear fellow. Ah. Fancy seeing Robert again. <laughs> How long is it? About five years. Well, it'll be great fun. If we could get hold of that young scamp, Frank, the party would be complete. Both the prodigal sons home again. I think Margaret will have all she can manage without Frank. Oh, poor old Margaret. Bless my soul, what does it matter? Let them all come, I say. But she worries too much, that's her trouble. In my opinion, we should all lead the simple life. Bread and cheese and eggs and things like that. But Margaret worries. She becomes apoplectic over trifles. You, you must have noticed it yourself. Yes. Incidentally, did you see who died last night? Peacefully at his home at Bracebridge? What? Not Piggy Payton? Yes, Piggy. Oh, <laughs> oh, I, I, I can't help laughing, Charles, when, when I remember how he used to boast of his cold bath and his beastly exercise. <laughs> Only 78, too. Younger than me. I must get Margaret to put some buttons on these trousers. Margaret! She's upstairs. Oh, well, she, she, she can do it later. I, I, I must go and get the weather book. Charles! Yes! Did you remember to see Mrs. Timms yesterday? Yes, she can't come. She's got rheumatism. Oh, how hopeless they are, these people. Didn't 
you tell her that our son and his wife are coming home from Africa? Yes, I did, dear. I did. Oh, I suppose I must go down on my knees and scrub the floors myself. No, no, my dear. Leave the floors. I can't leave the floors, Charles. We can't live in a pigsty. Oh, look, how disgusting. It's only Harry's pigeon. Well, I suppose I should be grateful he didn't put it on the sofa. He never thinks how much extra work his untidiness means. He just behaves as if we had a dozen servants in the house, all ready to clear up after him. Max 51, min 44. Max 51. Harry, is that the place for a pigeon? Oh, oh. sorry, Margaret, I, I just forgot. Harry, dear, while Robert and his wife are here, I must ask you to try and be a little more punctual and tidy. You see, forgetfulness gives me so much more work to do, Harry. And as it is, I really don't know how I'm going to get through it. So you will try, dear, won't you? Oh, my dear, of course, of course. And if you want me to do anything, just say the word. Any drawing of water or chewing of wood, why, count on me, my dear. Why did I say the maximum was? I, I thought it was 54. 51. Uh, are you sure? I, I, I thought it was 54. Nurse, take that pigeon to the larder, please. Eh? That pigeon, take it to the larder. You know I don't like touching feathers, my lady. Oh, nurse, don't be such a damned old fool. And don't you call me names, Mr. Harry, please. Well, you are a damned old fool. Don't like touching feathers, indeed. Here, 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 take it, take oh, it. Oh, no, I can't touch it, Mr. Harry. I, I should faint dead on the floor. Nonsense, you silly old woman. Here, here. Oh, Mr. Harry, don't, don't, Mr. Harry. Oh, Harry, dear, for goodness sake. Just a boy, harmless little oh, buddy. Oh, no, don't let him, Mr. Harry. Oh, Mr. Harry, don't. Harry, oh, don't. Oh, oh. oh. Is one to do? How can I get through all the housework with a lunatic like that to help me? Really, Charles, this house, it makes me feel quite desperate. Well, dear, you mustn't worry. <laughs> That's all anyone ever says to me. You mustn't worry. How would we eat? How would anything ever get done unless I worried? Nobody realizes what it means to try and run a huge barracks of a house like this and keep it reasonably tidy and clean. Nobody understands. Endless work with shoutings at nurse, petty little annoyances. You know, I, I feel quite worn out with My dear, please, please. <laughs> Poor old nurse. She gets crazier every day like the, like the rest of us. <laughs> no, no. Where did I put my weather book? Yeah, uh, you're, uh, you're sure it was 51? Yes. Max, 51. Min, 44. Rain, Nil. Wind, sow, sow, west, fine. <laughs> well, well, why do I keep this book, eh? I mean, well, what an earthly interest is it to anyone? I suppose one could look up the weather last year and compare it, so to speak. Yeah, that's true. If anyone didn't do this, one would have to do something else. Have I met Robert's wife? Of course you have. Don't you remember? What's she like? Quiet, a widow with a child about ten. Well, it'll be fifteen by now. We must have some photographs somewhere. We... Oh, yes, 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 here we are. All the family albums. Now, now watch this. Winton, 1904. Oh, too early. Oh, oh, I say, look, look, Charles. Robert's christening. Oh, I, I remember it as clear as if it were yesterday. Look at Margaret. She seems simply radiant, simply beautiful. Oh, she ought to see this. <laughs> Margaret! Margaret! Oh, better leave her alone. She's busy. Oh, damn it, she's always busy. <laughs> I say, what a party that was, eh? Champagne and all the fun in the world. And you and I and Ronnie Fraser went out and shot the snipe bog before breakfast. And there was ice on it, do you remember? And we went plunging into it, damn near frozen to death, and the snipe were whistling about all round us, and the sun coming up in the frosty air, and the grasses white. Beautiful, beautiful morning. hundred years ago. Good God, what's that? Well, that must be Robert and Elizabeth. Oh, they're confoundedly early. Here, I'm not ready, but my, my trousers, Charles. Charles! I, I, I'd better change, eh? What do you think? Charles! Coming, dear. Yes, you'd better change, Harry. Go along. Yes, yes, yes. Mother, darling. Huh? Father, how are you? 
It's been a long time. At last, darling. Come in, come in. I can hardly believe you're here at last. <laughs> how we've longed, how we thought of this homecoming. And Elizabeth, and Felicity. Well, she's grown up. Yes, isn't she huge? Such a pretty girl. And so like somebody. Who is it? It'll come to me presently. Come in, here. Give me that. I'll see to that. Oh, this lovely old house. I've been so looking forward to seeing it again. Our poor old house. Well, it's got so terribly shabby. We feel simply ashamed of ourselves, Elizabeth. But what can we do? Father, leave the luggage. I'll look after that. All right. Oh, it's a beautiful house. But, oh, the size of the place, Elizabeth. The size of it. Where's Uncle Harry? Oh, goodness knows. Poor Harry. He's got very old, I'm afraid, and so absent-minded. All day long, I have to be behind him. Harry, dear, it's tea time. Harry, don't forget your medicine. Harry, you've never changed your shirt, and so on and so on. It's just like looking after a child. When one's trying to cook and clean and the housekeeping, it's so wearing, so tiring. Where is he? Where's my baby boy? Master Robert, Master Robert, well, there now. <gasps> Come and give Nursey a kiss, lovey. Hello, nurse. Are you? Oh, isn't he splendid, my lady? Oh, what a man. And quite fat, too. <gasps> quite a chubby. He was always the chubby one. And Master Frank was thin. And Master Frank used to call him Little Butter Tub. And then they'd have such fights. Oh, Lord, bless my soul. <laughs> have you forgotten Mrs. Robert, nurse? Mrs. Robert? Why, of course not. The very idea. I remember you, nurse. Welcome to Winton, Mrs. Robert. Welcome and Godspeed. Thank you, nurse. Listen to her. I'm an old woman, and I say just whatever comes into me head at the time, dearie. I shall be 78 next April. She's 83 now. Uh, this is my daughter Felicity, nurse. Do you remember? But, saints alive, it's Mrs. Harry. It's Mrs. Harry Denham, the spit and image of her the day she came to this house. 45 years ago. Lady, look. You know, there is a likeness. It's quite extraordinary. How strange. It's what I've always said. It's reincarnation. That's what accounts for it. When we die, we all get born again and come back to Earth as children. And so we all go round and round forever until the day of judgment. Ah, and have you come all the way from Africa, dearie? Yes, nurse. Oh, imagine it. No wonder you look tired. I'll go right away and make you a nice cup of cocoa. Oh, please don't bother, nurse. I'm not a bit tired. You can't stop her, my dear. She makes cocoa all day long. She sings hymns and makes cocoa till I nearly go off my head. But what can one do? She's a faithful old soul. Yes, but she can't be much help to you. Really, it's about time the old thing was pensioned off, mother. Now, if you had one really efficient cook housekeeper... My dear you... boy, it's out of the question... Who'll come to a huge old-fashioned place like this, miles out in the country, to look after three old dodgers like us? Ah, well, now we come to the root of the matter, Mother. It's this house. The fact is, of course, it's simply absurd you're trying to keep this place any longer. Elizabeth and I are both agreed about that. It's sheer drudgery for you. Of course, it's a lovely place. Oh, it was. Oh, don't, Robert. It breaks my heart to see it gradually falling to rack and ruin. Everything rusts or rots for want of paint. The roof leaks. There's dry rot in the staircase. And only yesterday, a window on the second floor fell right out of its hinges when I went to open it. And look at my garden. A wilderness. Nettles and creepers and convolvulus wherever you look. And everything choked and swamped and overgrown with weeds. Desolation. Before the war, we could afford to pay a gardener. But now, the stupidest oaf asks £300 a year. I mean, a man not fit to plant cabbages. What can one do? Yes, from what little I've seen of England since we've been home, I'm simply horrified at the state of things. Money appears to have no value. The working class think of nothing but working a five-day week for ridiculous wages. How long the country will be able to afford it, I don't know. Sorry about that wretched fire. That wood won't burn. Wouldn't you like to come up and see your room, Elizabeth? Yes, thank you. I only hope you won't be too uncomfortable. I put Felicity next door to you. Yes, you go up, dear, while I have a chat with Father. All right. Once upon a time, Elizabeth, your room used to have the nicest view in the house. Looking right down the avenue and across to the lake. But now you can barely see the lake, but it's bright and 
Well, Father, how's everything? What news? Oh, much the same, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, your mother and I aren't getting any younger, but there it is. We get along somehow. Sit down there by the fire. Not that there's much warmth to us. <laughs> yes. But I must say the old place is looking a bit the worse for wear. I had no idea things had got quite so out of hand. Why, you can hardly get up the drive. Things have changed in the last five years. And the fact is that this house is far too big for you, Father. It's really becoming impossible. Yeah. Have a cigarette. There's a box somewhere. Oh, no, thanks. After all, these places are simply anachronisms nowadays. Nobody can possibly afford to keep them up. A house like this is simply a millstone round one's neck. True. Elizabeth and I have been very worried by Mother's letters. Letters? What letters? Well, the letters we used to get in Africa. I think perhaps you don't quite realize what a strain this place is on her. How tired she feels of the perpetual housework. And then think of the situation here. Two miles from a tiny village, no car. And the nearest doctor is six miles away. Why, you can't even leave the place. Why, don't suppose you see a friend from one year's end to the next? We do live pretty quietly, but then at our age we don't want a social life anymore. In the afternoon we generally sleep. Sometimes we all three go to sleep like this in a chair. Joyful and triumphant, come ye, you come ye to Bethlehem. Coco, my lady, Coco, Coco. All right, all right, nurse. Ah, now drink it while it's hot or it loses its value. Sing choirs <laughs> of angels, singing <laughs> Poor old nurse, mad as a coot. And that's another thing, Father. Old nurse is a charity that you can hardly afford. No, I suppose we can't. Perhaps while you're here, it's rather difficult to get rid of her. But if you decided to leave this place and take something smaller and more convenient, well, that would be a good opportunity. Leave this place? You mean sell it? Yes. And as it happens, I think I've got a buyer for it. A friend of mine in Whitehall was uh, telling me that the Ministry of Agriculture are looking for a big place in this part of the world to turn into a kind of technical college for young farmers. Good Lord. Mm. He was extremely interested when I told him about this place. Extremely interested. As a matter of fact, it's a chance in a thousand, Father. It seems to me absolutely providential. They'd give you a fair price and take the whole thing off your hands, lock, stock and barrel. They would, eh? After all doesn't really matter to you what the place becomes, does it? It doesn't do to be stupidly sentimental about these things. And actually, I'm absolutely convinced that you'd all three be much, much happier in a small house in Salisbury or Cheltenham or Bath. I don't like Bath. Well, I just said Bath anywhere, of course. Well, all we seem to be walking uphill in Bath. Well, don't go there, then. I just mentioned it as a possibility. I see. Cup of cocoa? Ah, uh, no, thank you. We've rather got into the cocoa habit. Nurse likes making it, so we drink it. I hope you don't think I'm interfering, Father. Oh, good gracious, no. Perhaps I'm quite wrong, thinking that you're not entirely happy here. Yeah? If I am, please say so. But the impression I got from Mother's letters was that you all felt the house was far too big for you. Now, just think how much better off you'd be in a small labor-saving place on the outskirts of some pleasant town. Outskirts? Where the outskirts? Well, right in the middle, if you like, of course. Oh, you said outskirts. And I need hardly tell you that the kitchen is right to the other end of the house. The miles one walks in this house. Often at the end of the day, my ankles are so swollen and my feet so sore, I can hardly hobble upstairs to bed. Yes, it's dreadful. Time and again, I ask myself, what pleasure is there in such a life? I mean, what's the point of it all? Have some cocoa, Elizabeth? No, thank you, Father. I must say I entirely agree with Mother. And if you'll only let me, I think I can sell this house for you almost immediately. My dear boy, who would buy such a hopeless white elephant? Oh, but I've just been telling Father. The Ministry of Agriculture are extremely interested. All I need to do is to put a call through to London and they'll send a man down to look over it at once. Robert, really? Yes, of course. Of course. If you'll say the word, I'll do the rest. If you'll let me take charge, I'll guarantee to have you settled in a comfortable little house by Christmas. Oh, Robert, if only you could. We need help so badly. Naturally, I didn't expect that you'd make the effort to move without help. 
one gets into a rut. Oh, and, one uh, does. Hmm. How well you understand, dear. Oh, what a relief it'd be. What a joy. Charles, do you hear? Yes. We must have a serious talk about it. Of course, there are various considerations. Naturally, but... He means Harry. What would Harry say? I hardly see why Uncle Harry should raise any objections after Didn't all. Did his wife die here? Yes, that's quite right. Nearly 40 years ago. It's all well, wasn't the same. He quite young. 25. And so beautiful. So beautiful. I remember her skating here one Christmas, just a month before she died. She wore a red dress with a white fur muff and a white fur cap. She skated so gracefully, and we all laughed at Harry because he couldn't catch her. I remember him standing in the middle of the lake, quite exhausted, and shouting, Penny, you witch, come here, come here. Yes, he always called her Penny. Poor Penelope. I never passed the lake without thinking of her. Yes. Hmm. All the same, one has to be reasonable. I'm sure your father and mother will want to talk it over quietly by themselves, Robert. Well, naturally, that's obvious, Elizabeth. In the meantime, let's talk of something more amusing than our domestic worries. How was Niasa land when you left? Yes, I've been longing to hear all about your work, dear. No cocoa, Elizabeth? Uh, no, thank you. I ask you to look at the amount of cocoa that idiot nurse has made, about two gallons of waste. Charles, just, I say, Charles, the, the, the most extraordinary Do thing. Do be oh. careful, Harry. I told you not to run downstairs, dear. He's so impulsive, Elizabeth. Don't know why not. You're always fussing, Margaret. So you're Robert's wife, are you? Well, how are you? To be absolutely candid, I, I shouldn't have known you from Adam. Have I changed so much? No, you haven't, my dear, but, but I have. The memory, atrophied. We're all abominably old, you know. No, no use for anything. But Robert's aged a bit, hasn't he? Silver threads among the gold, eh? He, he's changed a bit from these photographs. No, 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 here he is, aged two months or thereabouts. And that handsome gentleman is me. <laughs> and look, look, there's Charles with his beautiful moustache... And Margaret looking simply wonderful. <laughs> How lovely. Isn't it? You're taken at the church door after the christening. Look, look, Margaret. Do, do you remember? Harry, dear, you know how I hate old photographs. Do put them away. Hate them? Oh, my dear, don't be ridiculous. Well, I do hate them. They remind me of the good days that are gone when one was young and happy and without cares. And the less I think about it, the better. They only make me want to cry. Oh, no, my dear, no, oh, no. Oh, do put them away. Yeah, of course. That's as you say, my dear. Oh, by the way, Frank told me he was trying to get down for a few days. Frank, you? Oh, how splendid. Oh, I do hope he can come. We haven't seen him for weeks. And what's the rascal up to these days? I gathered he was a personal assistant to some company director. Another job, eh? <laughs> how the devil you managed to produce two sons as different as Robert and Frank? I'm damned if I know, Margaret. Here's old Robert, never lifts his nose from the grindstone, the backbone of the colonial service and all the rest of it. And frankly, the scoundrel who never, never holds any job for a couple of years. That's not quite fair, Harry. Frank's been very unlucky. Unlucky? Of course, he can't do wrong in your eyes. Doesn't he know it, too? Oh, if only he'd married the right sort of woman. Ah, but the right sort of woman would have had more sense than to marry him. The eternal butterfly, that's frankly... <laughs> Listen, listen. What is it? I keep hearing noises. Oh, you know what it is, dear. Blood pressure. You must be more particular about your medicine. You see? Now, that's the state I've got into now. I hear noises that aren't there. It's a sort of amiable lunatic. I ought to be in a home. Nonsense, dear. Oh, it's a nice thing, I can tell you, to, to walk about hearing noises. Oh, let's all have a glass of cherry. Oh, yes, we must celebrate the homecoming. Not me. Bad for me. Oh, one glass, dear. Well, if you're not all frightened that I shall start having hallucinations, you'd better pour it for me, Charles. No, no, when I was Robert's age... How old are you, Robert? Forty-three. Forty-three. Well, well, when I was forty-three, I... I uh, what were we talking about? Sherry, Elizabeth? Uh, thank you, Father. Margaret? Harry? Well, Robert, Elizabeth, here's welcoming you home. Indeed, yes. 
And here is a satisfactory solution to all your troubles. Our troubles? What troubles? Felicity! Is she upstairs? Uh, come along, dear. Shelley. Here I am. Penny. <laughs> Penny. Harry. <laughs> Robert, hold him. All right, Mother. He's fainted. What's Harry. What's with him? It's Felicity. We should have warned him. She does look so like Penelope. It's all right, Harry, dear. It's only Robert's girl. It's only Felicity. Oh, what a joy to have someone quick and sensible in the kitchen instead of that old fool nurse. All the washing up done in 20 minutes. Oh, saucepans again. Now, what did you all like to do? There's so much to do. Such an embarrassing choice of different entertainments. Let's all go into the garden and look at the weeds. You know you have a rest in the afternoon, dear. Oh, for a man of my age to rest is simply ridiculous. Damn it, I, I'll be resting for good and all before long. Oh, don't, oh. dear. No, I, I'm going to take my grandniece by marriage round the garden. You'd like to see the garden, wouldn't you? Very much, Uncle Harry. Good girl. You come along, Frank, you lazy rascal. All right. Now, don't get too tired, Harry, or you won't sleep. All oh, right, all oh, right, my dear. I'm not made of cotton wool. <laughs> if the boat hasn't rotted away altogether, Felicity, we'll make your wretched uncle rang row us round and round the lake. <laughs> what are we to do with him? He's so excited, and tonight, you know, he'll be tossing and turning... And swallowing sleeping draughts, and then he'll be impossibly bad-tempered in the morning. But he's so amusing, and he has such a wonderful spirit. Yes, but... Uh... A bit of a trial to live with, I imagine. These amusing people usually are, in my experience. Oh, if I could tell you how weary he makes me some days. Charles, dear, do go to sleep if you want to. I'm sure Elizabeth won't mind. I don't want to go to sleep. What's going on? Nothing, dear. Oh, that's good. Oh, oh, oh. Of course, Frank and Harry adore each other. Two of a kind, you know. Uh, I suppose Frankie hasn't talked to you about his new job, has he, Robert? Only casually. I gather he's a kind of private secretary to the director. He didn't seem to think it was likely to be permanent. Poor Frankie. He doesn't seem to be able to find anything satisfactory. It's so worrying. Oh, my dear mother, the fact is that Frank simply won't settle and work. Well, how can you blame him? He did so wonderfully well in the war, Robert. The war was 20 years ago, Mother. Really, to drag the war into it. It seems terribly hard to chain an adventurous spirit to an office stool. I'm afraid there's a great deal of sentimental nonsense talked about adventurous spirits and office stools. Naturally, nobody likes hard work. I really have very little patience. Oh, with look at Charles. <laughs> Sleeping like a child. I haven't the heart to wake him. But he promised to get me a bag of flour in the village. Oh, I'll run down in the car. Oh, will you, dear? Mm. Oh, that would be kind. So dreadful to have to make use of you when you're here on holiday, but what can we do? Oh, as if it matters. The more I think of it, the more convinced I am that you must leave this place. I'll have another talk with Father and Uncle Harry. Oh, no, no, not Harry, dear. Let me speak to Harry. One must be careful and tactful. Yes, all right, Mother, but I would like to get some kind of decision as soon as possible. We don't want to miss the chance of a good sale simply by being tactful. Oh, of course, dear. I'll speak to him today while he's in a good mood. Now, I'll just go and get ready, shall I? I hope you both like fish pie, by the way. Mm. Lovely. Oh, yes. Yes, we Harry's nice. so fond of it. I try to make it whenever I can. Oh, how they've aged in five years. I suppose one should have expected it, but it's a bit of a shock. It's quite impossible to carry on a conversation. Either they interrupt you or they simply go to sleep. Poor oh, dears, yes. They all look so tired. And this house. I'm appalled. The dirt everywhere. The atmosphere's terribly depressing. In a way, it suits them, you know. I think if this house were mine and I was 70 or so, I wouldn't want to leave. I should get attached to the cobwebs and the weeds. Why do you think I'd interfere if they were happy here? But look at the miserable letters we've had for the past two years. And how relieved Mother was when I said I could find a buyer for the place. You think they'd be happier somewhere else? Oh, don't you? Oh, I don't know. Do you remember how happy we thought we'd be when the war was over? We seemed to be just waiting, marking time till we could have a new and wonderfully happy existence. <laughs> Do you mean 
You're not happy? No, 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 no. But it seems to me that, well, that places and circumstances don't really make very much difference. I can't agree with that at all. I might have known that wretched boat was rotten. Look at me. Frank, father's asleep. Oh. Um, I went clean through the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harry laughed himself silly. You'd better go and change. Franky dear, what have you done to look at your trousers? Oh, I've just been playing in the lake. I went through the bottom of the boat. Oh, those old boats. They're all rotten, just like everything else in the house. Are you coming to the village with me, Roberts? Oh, yes, right. Uh, coming, Elizabeth? Well, if Mother will excuse me, I'm, I'm trying to patch up some things for Felicity. Of course, my dear. Have a nice, quiet afternoon. Sometimes all three of us go to sleep after lunch. Then the house is as quiet as a grave. I hope Felicity isn't bothering Uncle Harry, Frank. Bothering him? He's delighted with her. Didn't you see him staring at her all through lunch? She's a pretty girl. You know, when I last saw her, she was just a child. Makes one feel damned old. Yes, we're all getting on. Oh, I'm 41. Going grey, too. Grey? Yeah, look. Uh, no, uh, just round the ears. <laughs> <laughs> Robert said to me this morning, you know, you'll have to think seriously of settling down in some permanent job. At your age, he said, one can't go on chopping and changing. <laughs> oh, I can hear him. Well, of course, he's perfectly right. In the business world, one wants to get in at the bottom and move steadily upwards. Like yeast. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that's a very boring process. Anyway, I'm not married. No responsibilities. You could remedy that. You ought to. You've forgotten, have you? Forgotten? What? Something I told you 12 years ago, when you were a merry widow. It's you or no one, I said. Oh, Frankie, one says those things when one's young. Now, you had a child and wanted security, of course. Well, you got it, Lizzie. <laughs> Lizzie. Only Robert here you call me that. He hates it. Does he not? I like it. Lizzie. Lizzie. <laughs> oh, damnation, take it. Uh, what was that? Uh, oh, nothing, Father. Uh, I, I, I must get busy. Uh, Lizzie. I could have worked, you know. Oh, I don't say I would have done as well as old Robert, but... Honest to God, we wouldn't have starved. Frankie, dear, what's the good? Well, give me an incentive. Give me a reason. I'd have, I'd have sat in a blasted office as good as gold. You'll never believe this, of course. But I still love you. Frankie, don't. Oh, Lizzie. What the devil have you done? Frankie, please. Thank you. What are you doing? No, nothing, Father. Elizabeth and I are just um, gossiping about old times. Lord, listen to that fool of a nurse. That's because she's excited. Nurse, shut up! Oh, don't stop her. Come on, Lizzie. Let's dance. <laughs> don't, Frank. Don't be come a fool. Come on, come on. <laughs> -ra 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 Frank, let go. What's this? What's going on? I say, look at your mother, Lizzie. <laughs> Frank, you're a fool. Oh, a tea dance. Oh, splendid. Now, tea, everybody ready for tea. Oh, don't be an old fool. We've only just had lunch. Tea, it shall be in 20 minutes, and I'm as good as me word. I bet you've never been in a madhouse like this before, Felicity. This is something special, I can tell you. Oh, I'm going to change. Well, I suppose I must get some more firewood. For goodness sake, stop nurse making tea, somebody. It's only half past three. Shall I go and see what she's doing? I wish you would. She gets so excited and then one doesn't know what to expect. Felicity, you're not worrying Uncle Harry, are you, dear? You know, he, he usually rests in the afternoon, don't you, Uncle Harry? Oh, that's only because there's nothing else to do. I don't want to rest. I, I feel full of energy. Oh, good. Then I'll just go and see Nurse. Well, what a boy your Uncle Frank is, eh? Oh, what a rascal. <laughs> but he does us all good. He cheers us all up. He was a pilot, wasn't he? Bombers. 34 raids on Germany. I went up in an aeroplane once. I was sick over Aden. Very good place to be sick over, I should say. Have you been to Africa, Uncle Harry? India, Africa, China, North America, South America. Been everywhere. What were you doing? Doing? I don't know. We're just travelling about. Those days, you know, you could... Buy a ticket and go where you wanted. Forty years ago, that was. Just after... After my wife died. I see. She died here. In this house. In January. 
So then I, I went away for a year or two. Then I, I came back. I see. You'll be sad to leave this house then. Leave this house? Bless you, I shan't leave this house. Not until I leave the world, that is. Who, what would I want to leave it for? Oh, I don't know. Only I thought I heard Father say, um, something. Of course, it's a wonderful old house. It is. It's a proper house. Not one of your miserable modern biscuit tins. Every stick and stone in this old place has its own story for me. I can walk round it and see my whole life in its walls and buildings and pictures and trees and paths. I'm, I'm sleeping in the same room now as I slept in when I was a schoolboy home from Eden. Sometimes when I, when I wake in the morning and see the same furniture, the same pictures, I lie in bed thinking, what, still here? Still alive? Am I eight? Am I eighteen? Am I eighty? Am I a hundred and eighty? I can't quite imagine what it's like to be so old. Of course you can't, my dear girl. You just, just look at this hand of yours. Soft and smooth as anything. Then look at mine. All bones and wrinkles like an old bird's claw. And yet... Once it didn't look so very different from yours. Not as, not as pretty, of course, and never as clean, but something like it all the same. Mm, it takes some swallowing, isn't it? Oh, it, it must be sad to be old. Sad? The young think so, but the old are too tired to worry about it much. Besides, one, one has plenty of time to get used to the idea. But I admit there are moments... Sometimes in, in autumn, about this time of year, I, I begin to think, shall I see another spring? For all the years and seasons the devil can ensue must now be worse than few. <laughs> Don't, Uncle Harry. Oh, my, my, my dear girl, what on earth's the matter? Oh, I'm sure you'll live for years yet. Oh, I'll live to be a hundred and have a telegram from the Queen. <laughs> What a curse I should, should be to everybody. <laughs> Listen. Tick, tock, tick, tock. That's the old clock. Do you hear it? Yes. It isn't very loud when it stops. I know it once. Oh, I love this house. I could live here all my life. Aha, I'll hide you in the secret passage. Is that a secret passage? Oh, you must show me. <laughs> No, 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 not a word. It's, uh, it's supposed to be unsafe, but that's all rubbish. But, but will you and me... Wouldn't you like to go to sleep? Yes, I, I wouldn't mind. <sighs> Mark you, that was... As soon as I get off, that, that idiot nurse will come screaming in here. I'll keep her out of the way. Mm, yes, a good girl. And you, you'll, you'll sit quietly and read, won't you? You won't hum, will you? Hum? We have to have the vicar to lunch sometimes. Perfect fool, of course. And after lunch, he sits and hums like a blasted bee. Always keeps me awake. Ah, thank you, my dear. You comfortable? Exquisitely. Now I'll go and get a book. Good girl. Good girl. It means promotion eventually. Oh, good, dear. Well, Felicity, dear, have you been round the garden? Yes, I have. Where's your mother? Oh, she's in the kitchen and Uncle Frank's changing his trousers. Felicity? Yes? I want you a minute. Come into the dining room. Harry, dear. Mm. May I speak to you? Yes, yes, of course, yes, yes. Oh, dear, I hardly know how to start. Uh... I sometimes wonder, dear, if you quite realize how wearing it is for me to try and keep this great big house going without proper help. Yes, 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 dear, yes, of course. Because I, I know we only use a few rooms. But think how inconvenient everything is with the kitchen right away down that long passage and everything in it so old-fashioned and difficult. 
And now it's October again, the evening's drawing in. Perhaps you think this house doesn't mean as much to me as it does to you. But really it does, dear. All the happiest days of my life have been spent here. And I have a thousand golden memories of gay times we've all had together in the dear old place when things were easier. It seems a cruel sort of tragedy that now, at the end of our lives, we can't live peacefully and comfortably in our own home. But we can't, Harry. I really feel I can't face another long, lonely, cold winter here, working and working all day just to go wearily up to a cold room at night. We're all of us getting too old, too frail. And remember, dear, others have had to sell, too. After all, dear, as long as all three of us are together, as long as we face it cheerfully and bravely, I feel sure there may be years of happiness and security still in front of us. If I weren't all so tired and worried, I wouldn't snap at you so. <laughs> and we'd all feel fresher and better tempered and more ready to laugh and enjoy what little of life remains to us. Harry. Hmm? Yes, 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 yes. What is it? Tea, tea already? Oh, Harry, Harry. Hmm? But what's the matter? What were you, you, you saying something, Margaret? Damn it, I, I believe I dropped off to sleep. Yes, I, I believe I did. Right off to sleep. <laughs> More tea, anybody? No? Elizabeth, you're not cold? Not in the least, thank you. It's a lovely evening. Yes. And I expect this is the last time we shall have tea on the terrace. The old chestnut tree is losing its leaves. That usually means no more tea in the garden. <sighs> now, Mr. Pogeta, is there anything else you want to see for your report? Well, I think we've about covered the house, Lady Denham. Let me see, uh, cellars, yes. Perhaps we could take a look at the outbuildings presently, if it's no trouble. Oh, none at all. As well as the stables, I believe you spoke of potting sheds. One with a roof missing. Blown off in a gale. Oh, <laughs> that's really of no importance. The Ministry naturally anticipated that a good deal would have to be spent on repairs and alterations. Oh, for instance, some of the larger bedrooms will have to be converted into cubicles. There's the central heating to be installed. And I dare say the lighting will have to be rewired. Well, then, naturally, we shall redecorate throughout. So, you see, the, the old place will get a thorough wash and brush up, Lady Denham. But that will cost thousands. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. And how many students do you anticipate accommodating here at one time? Oh, 30 or 40. Then there'll be lecturers and staff, of course. Oh, but that's quite impossible, Mr. Pogeta. Where would they sleep? That's the object of the cubicles, Mother. Mm, some of the larger rooms could easily accommodate four. And with extra tables in the dining hall, mm, 30 would be very comfortable. <laughs> Crowded but jolly, as they say. 30? A bear garden. Surely we can allow Mr. Partiter to know how many the place will hold. Oh, yes, of course, dear. I was only thinking. <laughs> oh, dear. I can't look at that herbaceous border without wanting to cry. Really, it used to be a picture. One feels positively ashamed now to invite anyone to look round such a desolation. Well, I very much hope that if you return here in a year or two's time, Lady Denham, you'll see the place partially restored to its former glory. Oh, perhaps you'll call me a Philistine, Sir Charles, but upon my soul, I like to see fine old places being absorbed into the life of the country. I like to see it. But of course, everything should belong to everybody. In fact, it's a scandal that we should live in a house like this. Oh, not a scandal, of course, but hardly a practical proposition now, is it? My brother is only joking. But, of course, Pargeter is right. However much one may regret it in individual instances like this, it's an inevitable outcome of the country's changed economic situation. It will make a marvellous college. The old walls will ring and ring again with the cheery cries of the agricultural students. Melko! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frankie, you are foolish. Ah, oh, you needn't shout, Mr. Frank. I hadn't forgotten the tea things. <laughs> she thought I was shouting for her. Yes, nurse. Clear, please. 
Look what I found in the summer house. Oh, my old parasol after all these years. I told you you left it there and you wouldn't believe me. People would do a lot better to listen to me. It isn't the young ones as has all the sense for all their high talk. Now, don't matter, Nanny. I suppose I'd better take that tray or you'll drop it. Yeah. How do you know such thing, impertinent? You take the tablecloth and don't talk oh, so much. Oh, 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 there, there's sauce for you. <laughs> and many a time I've given him a good smacking for his pains. <laughs> oh, the young swellhead. <laughs> what days we come to in our old age and miserableness. She's been here with us ever since my first child was born, Mr. Pargetta. Very touching, these old family servants. Oh, now, if I'm to catch my train... Well, Robert will run you to the station, I'm sure. Oh, yes, yes, of course. But before Mr. Pargetta goes, I think it would be a good thing if we could get matters on some kind of definite footing. Uh, now that you've seen the place, Pargetta, perhaps you'll be able to say whether or not the Ministry is likely to be interested? Interested? Certainly. Oh, there's no doubt about that at all. Of course, I can give you no actual guarantee, but provided the property is available at a fair price, well, I don't think you'll have to look further for a buyer, Sir Charles. Ah, oh, that is very satisfactory. Uh, we will discuss the matter very, uh, very, very thoroughly and, uh, and keep in touch with you. Well, naturally, immediate availability would be an added attraction. Oh, I don't think there need be any undue delay. I think it's more or less decided, isn't it, Father? Uh, in a way. Uh, we, we shall have to sell a good deal. We have rooms full of junk. <laughs> what one can collect in a lifetime. Now, that's a detail, of course. That can be arranged. We shall have to find somewhere to live. That's another detail. And then, of course... There's Harry. Incidentally, where is he? He went off with Felicity. Poor dear. I'm afraid she will be getting very bored. Harry! Harry! Father, perhaps you'd like to show Mr. Partridge to the stables. I'll go and get the car around in five minutes or so. Oh, very well. Uh, come along, Partridge. If it's no trouble, Sir Charles. Uh, we'll go around by the greenhouses, then you can see the worst. We used to have capital grapes here. I told you 20 years ago, of course. Time. Harry! Luckily, he didn't understand what Mr. Pargeter was doing here, or we'd have had a scene. Harry! Harry, where are you? Really, Elizabeth, it's exasperating. After all the letters that Mother wrote, after all the discussion we had yesterday, and now they can't give a straight answer to a straight question, do they or do they not want to sell the house? When I talk to Mother, she says quite unequivocally, yes, so does Father. But to Pargeter, it's of course we shall have to discuss it. And of course there's my brother to consider. It makes me look such a fool, for one thing. If I'd known that they were going to vacillate and discuss and consider, I wouldn't have wasted the man's time by bringing him down here. Yes, it is annoying. Oh. But I suppose it's hard for them to decide at their age to leave a house they've lived in for so many years. Well, very well, then. Let them stay. What does it matter to me? But there, uh, it's a lesson not to interfere. How much wiser to ignore the situation completely, like Frank, merely to be amusing and cynical. Heaven knows, I don't expect gratitude. But at least I'm genuinely attempting to help them. Whereas Frank, uh, well, of course, Frank has so much charm, hasn't he? He's much the same as he always was, I think. Mm. Women always find him attractive. You do, don't you? I? Well, I find him quite amusing. Yes, you laugh at his jokes, I <laughs> There's no harm in that, is there? No, there's no harm in it. But it makes me feel somehow inferior. Inferior? Robert, that's ridiculous. Possibly. But Frank has always made me feel like that. And yet which of us has worked? Which of us has made some sort of a success of his life? <laughs> What's Frank done since the war except drift from one meaningless job into another. Yet I'm the one who's always made her feel a failure. I can assure you that no one else thinks you're a failure. No, it's simply that you and Frank have got quite different temperaments, that's uh, all. Oh, you say that. But when you're talking to him, you look quite different. More animated, more cheerful. Younger, somehow. Well, in front of other people, one makes an effort that isn't necessary with one's husband. What's the matter, Robert? You've never talked like this before. This house, this whole situation gets on my nerves. This tumble-down beauty, this wilderness of a garden, this everlasting harping on what is past. Nothing irritates me more. It's like living in a badly kept museum. 
I'm very fond of my parents, as you know. But really to live with them, to endure so much vacillation and untidiness and loose thinking, I confess I'm... I find it almost intolerable. I suppose we all get queer as we get old. One must make allowances, darling. Five years ago, one could carry on an adult conversation with them. Now it's necessary to make alliances. Mm. It seems to me that old age separates people from the adult world just as childhood does. Well, you've tried very hard. You've nothing to reproach yourself with. Uh, they let the ivy grow on that wall. It's beginning to pull it down. And there's so much creeper on the east side of the house that you can barely see the windows. Yes, Frank. Are you taking Partridge to the station? Oh, yes. Oh, well, he's fidgeting a bit. Well, there's plenty of time. Um, what about driving into Salisbury and seeing a flick? I don't think I can stand another family evening by the fireside with Mother explaining how to make egg sauce without eggs. We could leave in about an hour and get a meal in Salisbury. Yes, perhaps. Wouldn't they think it rude? Oh, of course not. Give them a peaceful evening to themselves. We can take Felicity. Robert! A coming! Oh, I shan't go, Frank. But you take Elizabeth and Felicity by all means. It's quite a good idea. Uh, coming, mother. Can't let up for a minute, can he? They wouldn't mind being left for an evening, but not Robert. Oh, dear, no. However, we've got his imperial blessing, so we may as well go. 6.30 suits you? They usually have a decent sherry at the George. I'll phone them up and order a meal. No, I think I'd sooner not, Frank. Oh, now, don't be silly. Really, I'd sooner not. Why? I don't want to go without Robert. He, he seems to be rather miserable. Miserable? Why? Oh, various reasons. Well, he'd much better go out and amuse himself for a change. <laughs> Extraordinary chap. Oh, well, cinema's off then. We'll, uh, we'll see something of each other in London, shall we? Of course. What does old Robert do in the evening? Does he like an occasional late night? Dancing, for instance? By the time he gets home, he's pretty tired. Mm, I know. Pipe and slippers. Would he have any objection to my taking you out occasionally? Objection? No, I don't think so. Good. And once in a while, we might step out together, hmm? Perhaps. Perhaps? You sound awfully enthusiastic. In plain language, you mean no. I don't think it's a very good idea, Frankie. I see. And why not? Well... <gasps> What's the point, after all? Point? Well, must there be a point? Can't we go and amuse ourselves without there being some dire purpose behind it? Can't we have a perfectly innocent evening out? You're kidding yourself, Frankie. Hmm? A perfectly innocent evening out is not what you want at all, is it? You're bored with old Robert. Anyone can see that. Can they? And you all console me, is that it? You know what I feel about no, you. No, Frankie, don't. <sighs> Don't be so damn virtuous. Listen, I don't say my marriage is perfect, but I'm not breaking it up and making Robert suffer just for a bit of excitement with you, however much I might possibly enjoy it, and... Well, that's that. Oh, give it up, Frankie, do. Go back to London. You might just as well. You aren't really going to get any change out of me. You know, it's high time you find yourself a girl and married her and settle down. Settle down. Oh, to hell. Must every day. Hey, Frankie, come here, you scoundrel. I want to show you something. Yes, uh, another time, Uncle Harry. Don't. Another time. No, it won't be another time. Oh, curse the fellow. Show me the underground passage, Uncle Harry. I do want to see it. Ah, that. Well, well, no, if I show it to you, not a word to anyone, Felicity, eh? Of course not. You see, there's some nonsense about it being dangerous, but the last time I went down, it was a seat for houses. Smells a bit, of course. <laughs> Runs right under the house and... But soft, we are approached. Shh, no, not a word. Harry, we were looking for you, dear. Well, you found me. Felicity, dear. Uh, Charles and I want a word with Uncle Harry. Very well. Ah, here's Robert. Well, did your Mr. Pargetta catch his train? Yes. I couldn't make out what the devil he was doing here. I suppose he wanted a subscription for something. He came to look over the house, dear. Oh? Uncle Harry might as well know that he came with a view to buying it. Buying it? <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> of course, it's all very well for us to laugh, but sooner or later this poor old house will be a damned institution of some sort. You mark my words. Look what happened to Ackerley. 
As soon as poor old George Reavy drank his money away, a girl's school. And what a shoot that was, eh, Charles? A fine shoot. Oh, on a windy day, I've seen pheasants coming out of that hill covered looking like starlings and doing 70 miles an hour. Now old George is living in a private hotel in Bognor, walking up and down the promenade in an overcoat and changing his library books at the chemist. Oh, pitiful. We can thank our stars we've not come to that yet. I really think we must decide once and for all what the future of this place is to be. Naturally, Partido wants to know just where he stands. Is the house available, or is it not? And I should just like to say this. As far as I'm concerned, it's a matter of complete indifference whether you stay or sell. I came here with the intention of helping, that's all. But of course, dear, we know that. I'm very dense, of course, but I don't quite follow this conversation. What does Robert mean about the house being available? How can it be available when we're living in it? But, Harry, dear, the point is, do we want to go on living here? Now that we have a chance to sell the place, oughtn't we to accept it? Sell it? Sell Winton? In God's name, why? Well, dear, don't you see? Uh, it's really far too much for us, Harry. I think perhaps you don't quite realize, Uncle Harry, what a strain it is on Mother trying to manage a huge old house like this without servants. I do get so tired, Harry, desperately tired. The more one thinks of it, the more impossible it seems. Mm. Yes. You see... If we were all 20 years younger, Harry, dear, but at our age... <laughs> but at days when I hardly have the courage to get myself out of bed in the morning to start the long, dreary day's work. Mm. Yes, yes, of course. Goodness knows I've tried. I've ransacked the village to try and get help. But you can't get people to come two miles, especially in winter. I know. Oh, Harry, you do say something. But me? I, I've got nothing to say. It isn't my house. But besides, I don't do the cooking and the cleaning and the rest of it. I eat three meals and run about amusing myself. So if you people want to sell the place... Oh, want to sell? Harry, you know we don't, dear. It'll break our hearts to leave. Oh, don't be unkind, dear. I can't bear it. Yes, I'm not being unkind. I, I'm being accommodating. Oh, Harry, dear. Poor Robert, what a nuisance we are to you. What a nonsense, Mother. Three old cronies sitting round and wondering what on earth to do with themselves next. Really, what purpose is there in our lives? Ah, now I love these philosophical speculations. The purpose of life. Of course... If we decide there is no purpose, the whole problem is solved. We can all go and jump into the lake hand in hand. How can you joke, Harry? Don't you see the tragedy of it all? Tragedy? What's tragic about it? Here we are. Three old upper-class anachronisms scratching about in a house that's 15 sizes too big for us. That's not tragedy. It's farce. <laughs> Pantaloons, that's all we are. <laughs> now then, the great decision. To leave or not to leave? Well, the decision should be left to the person on whom the brunt of running of the place falls, to Margaret. Yeah. Now, the whole responsibility has been put on me. What can I say? It isn't fair. Let's try to talk about the matter calmly, Mother. Oh, dear. Won't anybody help me? We are all trying to help. Of course we are. I could have sworn I heard that damn cat again. Huge ginger brute. Bush. 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 Of course, there's the future to consider. I don't mean our future. There's not much left of that. But Robert will never live here, I imagine. No, old Frank. And if we can get a decent price from this fellow, what's his name? He hinted at about 11000 with the land, of course. Oh, I don't call that much of a price for one of the finest 16th century houses in the country. Wouldn't look at a penny under 20,000 myself. It's a lot of money, Uncle Harry. It's a lot of house. There'd be a few thousand to spend on it, remember? Oh, nonsense, my dear fellow. It's sound as a bill. Lick of paint here and there, a few weeks' work in the garden. Weeks, my dear Harry. Have you any idea to take years? Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, we're not discussing that, are we? No, of course we are not. Well, I don't know what we are discussing. 
We sit here talking and talking, but we only go round and round in circles. And the end of it will be that nothing will be decided as usual. And we shall just go on living here exactly as we have done for the last 10, 20, 30 years. Oh, hell, it's beginning to get chilly. I might as well go back to my kitchen. Very well. Then that's that. Watch, watch. I must tell Pargeter that the house isn't available. I promised I'd give him an answer in 24 hours. Yes. Yes, of course, dear. Very well. Am I allowed to speak? Of course you are. Only do be quick, dear. Then I give it as my considered opinion that we should go. Oh. Out with the suitcases and trunks. Pack everything. Sell the whole place lock, stock and barrel. And tomorrow to fresh woods and pastures new. He doesn't really mean it, do you, dear? I mean every word of it. In a situation of this sort, there's only one thing to be done, to act. Don't sit about and talk. Act. But, Harry, you know quite well... Now, don't argue with me, Margaret. I know what I'm talking about. If we sit here, we shall regret it. We shall gloom. We shall talk of lost opportunities and missed chances. And, and don't deny it. You want to go. And so does Charles. And damnation take it. So do I. Change. Contrast, movement, why, that, that's the spice of life. Certainly we'll go. And we'll do it properly. We'll, we'll travel. Because it, we're not too old. How about a trip to Rome, eh? Why not? Haven't I thrown my coin into the trevi? Imagine it, the, the Spanish steps, the sun, the brightness, the warmth, the music. Bring me maps, timetables, railway guides, and we'll plan a journey. We'll plan a new life, confound it, a new life. A new life. Robert! Robert! Yes, Mother, I'm coming, just doing the labels. I finished my dressing case, dear. I'll fetch it in a minute. Mr. Robert! Mr. Robert, where's my trunk? I told you, nurse, it went to the station yesterday with the other heavy luggage. There. Now I shall never see it again. Well, of course you will. You'll see it at the station in a quarter of an hour. That's as it may be. We shall see. It's all very well to be sure, but it's better to be safe. It couldn't possibly be safer. Fine words, butter no parsnip. Now, tell me frankly, Robert, do I look ridiculous in this hat? Oh, of course not. It's so strange to be dressing up for London again. I can't believe I'm seeing this old room for the last time. Can't realize it. A good, strong cup of cocoa before traveling is the best thing out, my lady. Why is it when one leaves a place that one remembers only the happy times one has spent in it? That's what my father used to say. If you were going off to be hanged, you'd be sorry to say goodbye to the condemned self. Do you suppose Uncle Harry's luggage is ready? Oh, I'm tired of trying to help poor Harry. He packs things, unpacks them, packs them again. It's best to leave him alone, dear. Yes, but he's only got about ten minutes. However, we shall be here to clear up if we can forward anything he wants. <laughs> and they picked up of the fragments that remain, twelve baskets full. <laughs> She keeps saying things like that this morning. Nurse, dear, I do hope you'll be all right. My sister will meet me at Charing Cross Station and take me to her home in Orpington. I'd better go and help Uncle Harry. Well, nurse, you'll be happy there. She'll look after you. I'll have nobody looking after me, my lady. The day I can't look after myself, I'll jump out of the window and have done with it. And I'll make that very clear, I can tell you. You've been so brave, nurse, so patient with us. So loyal, so trustworthy all these long years. I've never taken a thing, my lady. Not so much as a lump of sugar. And let anyone say I have. Stupid and headstrong, that I may be. No, of course not. Oh, yes, I am. But God either gives you brains or he doesn't. And it's no use complaining. But nobody could have been a better, kinder friend to us. Nobody. I'm ashamed when I think how often I've spoken sharply and impatiently to you. Ah, if we could all swallow the hard words we've spoke, the world would be a happier place, my lady. Well, all ready, nurse. My sister will meet me at Charing Cross Station and take me to our home in Orpington. Good, capital. Well, it'll be a change for all of us, hmm? Change and decay in all around, I see. Did you tell John to bring the car in plenty of time, Charles? Yes, I did. He couldn't believe we were leaving the place. Decent fellow, John. I remember when he was born. His mother was the baker's daughter and no better than she should have been. All our old friends in the village. 
It's a bit like leaving part of ourselves behind. What do you want to leave for, I don't know, flying about the country at your age? It's not right, my lady. I'm sure you don't mean to be impertinent, nurse, but don't say things like that. It's hurting. Sheer foolishness, if you ask me. No, no, no. I say what I think. It's a fault with me, I dare say. But when a thing's ridiculous, then ridiculous, I call it. Harry! Harry! Well, surely he's ready by now. Here I am. Plenty of time. He can start for ten minutes yet. Then he forgot the old fox's mask. Are you taking that thing, dear? Well, of course. I haven't kept it for 40 odd years just to lose it now. Perhaps you'd like it stored, Uncle Harry. No, I wouldn't. I know it's silly, but there it is. I... This mask means something to me, and I'm taking it with me. Which days hunting any man ever had in his life. The trouble is, it won't go in a suitcase. What the devil is that matter? I'll carry it. My weather book, too. I'm taking that. Harry, dear. In heaven's name, Margaret, why not? Confound it, I kept these records for 20 years and more. I'm damned if I'm stopping now. Very well, dear. Thank you. <laughs> All this work we are giving you and Elizabeth Robert is really too bad. No, I don't mind in the least, mother. I only hope you'll all be comfortable and feel that the trouble was worthwhile. I'm told that it's uh, an extremely comfortable hotel. They don't mind giving you breakfast in bed and hmm, that sort of thing. Quite used to dealing with octogenarian cripples, eh? Just the place for us. Anyway, it will certainly be a good rest for Mother, Uncle Harry. Yes, of course, of course. Here's the lunch. I put it all in one basket. How kind of you, dear. But isn't there a restaurant car? Yes, dear, but it's usually very crowded. Well, if you don't mind me hiccuping for about 70 miles, you know what I'm like with sandwiches. We don't seem to be able to do the right thing today, do we? I'm just warning you, that's all. Well, you shall go along to the restaurant car, dear, and have the proper lunch. I shall eat sandwiches if they choke me. Harry, dear, do you think you've really got everything? Haven't the least idea. Shall I just run up and have a look round? If you would, dear. Aristocrats waiting for the tumbril. It's a far, far better rest I go to now than I have ever known. <laughs> Nobody appreciates it, of course, but... This is actually a historic moment. This is the fall of the House of Denham. There's been a Denham at Winton Manor since... When, Charles? Since 1572. Since 1572. And now we pass, unwept, unhonored, and unsung. Here we go, shuffling out of our inheritance with no more ceremony than if we were cattle being driven to the slaughterhouse. Oh, Harry, dear, now you'll only upset yourself. No, I shan't. Thank goodness I'm perfectly capable of looking at the thing objectively. It's a fine house. Solid, well-proportioned, light and spacious. We shall not look upon its like again. It was built in the days when Englishmen valued craftsmanship. When the shoddy, the pretentious, the ugly, the inferior would not have been tolerated. We should be proud to have lived here. Even if we have capitulated at last, we, we may, I suppose, be proud to have delayed its surrender to the barbarians. Lower the flag and let the enemy advance. Eyes look your last. Arms take a rust embrace. Now look what you've done, Harry. And just before the taxi comes, it's all right, nurse. Mr. <laughs> Harry was only talking. Everything passes. Everything passes away. Oh, nonsense, nurse. Things don't pass away at all. And if they do, it can't be helped. You talk as if you were the only person who was sad to leave. You might credit me with some feelings as well. Everything passes in time. Nurse, please, surely we needn't have a scene now, need we? <laughs> sorry I spoke. Very sorry. Don't say another word. Fast falls the even time. Oh, shut up, nurse. <laughs> oh, there, now everybody's turning against me. No, they are not, oh. nurse. Only do stop crying. <laughs> I think I heard the taxi. No, Nothing. He may come any minute, though. Mother, I found these dresses in one of the cupboards in Uncle Harry's room. I don't know if you'd like them all packed for storing. Oh. Thank you, my dear. Yes, of course. Those were hers. Uh, I, I suppose it would be too much to suggest a, a, another case. But of course, we can take them if you want to, dear. We, we, we can, eh? Oh, no, 
A lot of trouble, though. A lot of silliness carrying old dresses about. I'll, I'll burn the lot. Burn them? Now? Now, at once. A bonfire. Uh, would you like me in case the taxi comes? No, I'll do it myself. No one help. At least, uh, you'll come. Hey, Felicity, you're the girl for a bonfire, aren't you? Yes, I'll come if you like, Uncle Harry. Good. <laughs> come along with me, then. Come on. We'll make a great fire. Uh, and I know where there's a can of paraffin to start it off. Oh, oh dear, oh. paraffin, and he's got his only decent suit on. If you'd left them where they were, Elizabeth, you'd have forgotten all about yes, them. I'm sorry, I, I didn't think. There's an end to them. Beautiful dresses, too. The finest money could buy. <gasps> Second best wasn't good enough for Mrs. Harry. I hate waiting when I'm ready. Where's this damn cab? Quarter two at the latest, I told it. It's just on uh, quarter two now. Will you come to the sale, Robert? I couldn't bear it myself. Oh, yes, I'll come, certainly. How are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perished? There's Harry's bonfire. Oh, it's very near the summer house. Oh, there they go. The flames devoured them. Beautiful dresses, silk and satin. He has to use plenty of paraffin. The taxi. The taxi. Oh, now we must hurry. No, no, there's no need to hurry. I think if we get the luggage on first, I hope he's brought his trailer. My ticket. I've no ticket. We'll get your ticket at the station, nurse. Now, don't you lift anything, Father. I'll send him in. Shall I go and take my place in the car, shall I? Yes, yes, nurse, very well. There'll be no pistol. She's out of the way. Morning, lady. Morning, sir. Mm. Just leave everything. I'll load up. Good morning, John. Is this the lot? Nothing upstairs? No, there's nothing upstairs. All right. I'll get these in easy. Margaret, have you got any silver? Where's Harry now? I'll run out and tell him. I'm so frightened Harry will give way at the last moment, and then I shan't be able to stop myself crying too. No, 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 no. Have you got any silver? I have only two sixpences. There'll be plenty of room. I think if you'll go out now, Mother, I suppose Harry's coming, is he? Oh, yes, dear. I'll take these out to the cab. Well, that looks like the lot. We're going. We're really leaving. <laughs> Don't let me cry, Charles. No, no, my dear. Don't think about it. That's the best. Goodbye. My house. My home. That's right. That's right. Now, if you've got a couple of half crowns in your bag... Uncle Harry! Uncle Harry! The taxi's here! Uncle Harry! Uncle Harry! 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 Taxi! Would well, you believe it? Worse than a child. He's done it on purpose, of course. Uncle Harry! No, oh, he must be in the garden. I couldn't see him by the bonfire. Unless Felicity, she's with him, I suppose. Damn little fool. Oh, Robert, darling, don't get so angry and excited. I expect he's just washing his hands or something. I'll go upstairs. Perhaps he went in the back way. Now, where can he have got to? Uh, it's a uh, bit No doubt he'd like you to miss the train. Oh, no, no, dear. I don't think so. Oh, you think he's simple, Mother, but I don't. I believe he's been working up for this. He means to upset all our plans. I felt it all along. Robert, dear, I'm sure you're wrong. Harry wouldn't do that. <sighs> I'm wrong, am I? All right, then. We'll see. But mark my words. You'll never leave this house. Never. There's nobody upstairs. I think there must be someone in the garden still. Robert's very upset. He seems to think Harry's doing this on purpose. Oh, surely not. That's what I said. <laughs> Curious thing. No sign of him. Fancy him getting himself lost at a time like this. Ah, there goes the summer house. Not burning. Oh, a dead fall. Oh, it's falling down anyway. Uncle Harry! Uncle Harry! If we're to make sure of the London train, sir, it'd be as well to get off in a minute or two. Yeah, but we can't, John. Mr. Harry's disappeared. <laughs> well, we've a little time yet. But I don't like cutting the London train too fine. It waits for no man, my lady. Oh, we can't go without him, that's certain. There's no sign of either of them. I've looked everywhere. I'm afraid they're hiding. Hiding, my dear boy. Well, if anybody can suggest any other explanation. Oh! Oh, goodness, what was that? Miss Mr. Harry, Miss Felicity. Oh, sakes and mercy, what a sight, what a mess. Oh, my Lord and Savior, just look at the both of them, all covered with mud and dirt, and Mr. Harry limping. All right, yes, all right. Harry, what on earth? Harry, dear. Oh, don't all shout and scream. Give me a drink. Felicity, what's happened? Oh, we went down the underground passage, and it fell on us. 
fell in the damn thing. Oh, Harry, you might have been killed, both of you. Charles, the brandy, dear. It's all very well saying brandy, but where is it? Well, you have to go down to the cellar. Buried alive. It's a warning. As clear as daylight, it's a warning. Oh, shut up, nurse. I can't understand why you... It doesn't matter why, dear. I never got out without the girl. He was a proper little rabbit. Pulled her old uncle along like a good... Oh, it was horrible. Come along upstairs, darling. We'll change those muddy clothes. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, if it matters, dear, thank God you're both safe. I shall go and make some cocoa. Now, take my arm, Harry, dear, and we'll go up and get those things off you. You must lie down for a bit, and Charles will bring you a nice strong drink. Felt like a blasted mole digging away. <laughs> well, we hadn't gone far down when the confounded roof caved in behind oh, us. Oh, how dreadful. But fancy being such a damn fool to take the girl down. No fool like an old fool. This is my best suit, too. <laughs> Have to stay here till it's clean. And don't you worry, dear. Come along upstairs. You'll be all right, dear. You'll be all right when you've had a nice rest. Ah, Mr. Robert. Might have been a nasty accident there. You can fetch in the luggage, John. They won't be traveling today. Nurse is singing again. Everybody's delighted, Elizabeth. And of course, the pretense that they've simply postponed the move until Uncle Harry's better is quite childish. They could have gone today if they wanted to. Last night, Father told me that in view of the doubtful situation, Patrick had better regard this house as unavailable for the time being. In plain language, they mean to stay, and I've simply wasted my time. Yes, it's a shame, it really is. You've tried so hard. It's a curious thing, but I seem to go through life trying very hard and effecting very little. It's as if I don't work. You've always worked tremendously hard. And always been rather disliked. No, no. You know it's true. I've always been unpopular, just as I'm unpopular here in my own family. I sometimes wonder how it was you ever consented to marry me. Goodness, you're in a morbid mood this morning. Yes. I feel isolated from everyone. Everyone feels that sometimes. No relationship, however satisfactory, alters the fact that, well, a part of us always exists in solitude. Did you read that in some book? I don't know. Perhaps I did. Mm. I must join a decent library this winter. I never seem to get time to read in Africa. I... I intend to take more time off, too, so that we can go to concerts, theatres, so on. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Of course, very much. I sometimes imagine that you... Uh, that you must find our marriage rather unsatisfactory. Now, what on earth makes you think that? I don't know, too. That one day you would meet somebody uh, attractive and amusing, like Frank, say. And that you'd leave me. And then I'd be completely alone. If that happened, I don't think I could go on living. It won't happen. But do you swear? Do you promise? Of course I do. Do you depend on me so much? I depend on you completely. How strange. It's a confession of weakness. Of love, too. It makes me happy. Hmm. Well, that's something, I suppose. Got a stiff neck this morning. Too many drafts in this place. <laughs> I'll rub it for you tonight, darling. Harry has been singing in his bath, <laughs> which means he's quite recovered. But he will lie and boil himself, and the doctor particularly told him not to. Have you both had breakfast? Yes, thank you. Oh, what a joy to come down and find food already on the table. Oh, dear. Tomorrow morning, when you've gone... I shall be at it again, and soon it'll be dark in the morning, so weary and depressing. Still, one mustn't complain. I'll go and get you some fresh coffee, shall I? Will you, dear? Oh, thank you so much. Charles is just coming. You want to make an early start, I expect, Robert? Oh, yes. Yes, I'd like to get off fairly soon. 
It's been very nice having you, Robert. Very nice indeed. By the way, I hope this man Parkinson won't be too upset about our decision. Parchita. No, I'll go to see him and explain things. Oh, yes, do. It's better than writing. Tell him that really we can't be hurried. I didn't think anyone was hurrying you, Mother. Oh, well, you, you know what I mean, dear. And after Harry's accident, we all felt it would be unwise. Uh, perhaps later on. We'll see. And goodness knows, nobody dreads the long winter months here more than I do. I suppose we shall muddle along somehow. Here's some more coffee. Oh, thank you, dear. Morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning, Father. Uh, Robert's going to see Parkinson, dear. Hmm. Oh, good. Give him our apologies and all the rest of it. Uh, tell him we've decided to think things over. Uh, next year, perhaps. Next year, he won't want it anyway. Well, somebody else will, probably. Somebody might like it as a lunatic asylum. <laughs> There'll be four patients to start with. It was so good of you, Robert, dear, to have gone to all this trouble. I should think so. Very good. Ah, it's no trouble. I hope you don't think us ungrateful, dear. We know you meant it very kindly. Of course not. I'll just go and put the luggage on the car. If you'll excuse me. I hope he's not vexed with us. Oh, I'm sure he's not. Vexed with us? Where should he be? Well, I thought he seemed a little short in his manner. Perhaps it's my imagination. After all, he couldn't expect us to let Parkinson have the house without really thinking the matter over. You see, he thought you were unhappy here and really wanted to leave. In a way, of course, that's rather true. It is dreadfully hard work. I don't think anyone quite realises. Good morning, everybody. Come along, Harry, dear. Coffee's getting cold. Well, how is everybody this morning? Have you had breakfast? Yes, I think Robert wants to make an early start. Oh, quite right. Mustn't let the grass grow under his feet. Duty, stand, order, the voice of God, etc. Pass the butter, Charles. Great fellow, Robert. Man of blood and iron. Not really, you know. You are not to laugh at Robert, dear. Nobody could be kinder or more thoughtful. Oh, my dear, I yield to nobody in my fervent admiration of your eldest son. And you'll be taking my felicity, too? Yes, I'm afraid so. I've got to think of getting her ready for school. Oh, there's a little bird flying about in the passage upstairs. A little robin, cheeping and fluttering against the window. Well, let it out, Fetid. Let it out, I'll do no such thing. When a bird flies in through the window, that means happiness in the house. Ah, you're a superstitious old witch, nurse. You can laugh your film, Mr. Harry, but no bird do I turn out of this house. The warnings are clear for them that have ears to hear. We could do with a bit of liver, me lady. There's not a scrap of meat in the house. Very well, nurse. I'll go and see about it. <laughs> She's always at me to buy liver. She simply loves it. Morning, Uncle Harry. Morning, Robert. Uh, if you'd like to get your hat on, Elizabeth. Yes, I won't be long. Back to work, eh, Robert? Yes, that's right. Uh, you must come again in the spring, dear. For all its wildness, the garden looks quite colourful then. The spring, that's looking forward. Goodness, yes. Oh, the long, long winter months. Every year I wonder how we shall ever get through them. You must try to take things easily, Mother. Mm, I wish I could. But in this huge house... If I live till next April, I shall be 81. Of course you'll live, dear. Don't say such things. There's no of course about it. We're ready now, Robert, if you want to start. Oh, well, Mother, I think we'll be saying goodbye. Must you, dear? Hmm? Well, it's been very nice having you, all of you. We've enjoyed it very much. Yes, we have. Well, I'm afraid you haven't. We've been so tiresome, haven't we? Upsetting all your plans. I hadn't any plans. I was merely trying to be of some use, that's all. It was so kind, dear. And if ever we do think of moving, we shall certainly tell Mr. Parkinson. Uh, goodbye, Father. Goodbye. Goodbye, Uncle Harry. And goodbye, my boy. And what about my felicity? When's she coming to cheer up her miserable old uncle again? Oh, soon. Quite soon, I hope, Uncle Harry. Perhaps next holidays, if it can be arranged. Oh, oh, next holidays. I'll be standing, watching for her then, like Mariana on the moated grange. Well, if you're ready, Elizabeth, we'll come and see you off. Perhaps at Christmas we could have a party with Frankie, too. Yes, that's it, with Frankie, too. Yeah. He only said... My life is dreary. She cometh not, he said. But you will come, Felicity. Eh? It's, it's a promise. Eh? Yes, I promise to come, Uncle Harry. Goodbye. Oh, until the holidays. Until the holidays. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.
Just sit down and think where to begin. Having guests is very nice. But it does disorganize one's life. A nurse! We shall have to start fires again in the morning. Damn chilly. Ooh. The winter, the winter. Nurse! I suppose she's making cocoa. Where's my weather book? Yeah. Minimum 32. Yeah, yeah. What did I say? Frosts are going to start early this year. Oh, don't. Felicity's a sweet child, but what an appetite. My Felicity. Oh, now I must get busy. I'll make you a list for the village, Charles. Yes, very well. And after lunch, I'll cut some wood. Yes, yes, we must all get busy. It's the only thing. I never did like the autumn. Give to the boys October. Well, not to me, thank you. Dead leaves everywhere. Howling winds, most depressing time of the year. <coughs> get, get in my confounded chest, too. <coughs> Aren't you going to light the fire? Yes, I am. You know, we ought to go away for a change. Do us all good. Different food and different faces. D different conversations. Where, for instance? Oh, I don't know. London, Torquay, Bath, anywhere. Well, yeah. mm. we must talk it over. That's it. We must talk it over. Now, let me see. October 17th. Max 44. Min 32. Two. Wind west northwest. Cloudy and dull. <coughs> oh, the little bird has flown right down the long passage and out of the window at the end. The little bird has flown. <laughs> That was Sybil Thorndyke as Lady Denham and Lewis Casson as Sir Charles in A Picture of Autumn by N.C. Hunter. Harry was played by Philip Ray, The Nurse by Mary O'Farrell, Elizabeth by Rachel Gurney, Robert by Hayden Jones, Frank by Nigel Stock, Mr. Pargeter by Godfrey Kenton, Felicity by Tracy Rogers, and John by John Pullen. The play which was recorded was produced by Charles Lefeuille.